Hello my darlings and welcome to another Bedroom Guru with me, Nikki Allen. How are you all doing? It's coming up to Halloween. I cannot wait because we are going away and we are going to be going to Burley Woods with some friends of ours. It's going to be such fun. Burley Woods is where there's lots of witches killed during the Inquisition. Very much looking forward to my Halloween. Anyway darlings, in the true spirit of Halloween I thought I would share with you another spooky story. Real life ghost story. I got so many emails and so much response from the last one. Um, I thought I'd share another one. And also thank you for sharing your ghost stories. Some of them are amazing. The things you've seen. I don't know, I don't know what is wrong with skeptics because you know, most people that um, send me ghost stories and things like that, you know, they're totally not open to it. They're not spooky doogie like me. And yet they get these most wonderful things happen where you just couldn't make it up. It's fabulous, isn't it? This is a bit different this time. I'm going to swap around between spirit and ghost. As you know, <coughs> from the last one, um, it's early in the morning. See, I have to clear my throat, darlings. Clear my throat. Um, ghost and spirit. Ghost, as we said, is a reflection of the past. It's a replay of an event that used to habitually happen in a certain place and era. Um, and that energy continues to replay. Spirit is alive, interactive. Hello, I'm here and I'm ready to talk if you want to. Okay, so this one um, is set. Basically, I was I was um, phoned up by another medium to say that there was a problem at house in Essex, um, and that it was really really bad. And I'm not gonna lie, right? It's this sounds awful, right? Because I couldn't imagine being someone without any spiritual knowledge and then having something bad in their house. I couldn't imagine it. But just remember, these are really rare. Right, most of them are explainable, and this one is all right. So, I'll, I'll, when you first look at it, you think, Oh my god, but just bear with me on it, okay? So, they said, Look, you know, can you go around and have a look because they really need help? There's a massive issue in the kids' bedroom, um, and it's cold and it's negative and it's horrible. And it's blah, blah, blah. And I thought, Oh, lovely, that's what I mean. And I thought, oh, lovely, I could deal with a nice spirit and get rid of it and help these people. You know, you always hope that it's really going to be that, but sometimes it's their imagination or God knows what, you know, you have to work out what it is. So I turn up, it's a nice autumn day. Again, I did this article in um, Most Haunted, um, in Haunted Magazine. Anyway, turned up and it's just a typical flat on a, a flat house on a um, estate. Um, and, you know, nothing really outstanding it's not you know most people think you're going to turn up to this big spooky house where the door opens on its own you know and there's cobwebs in the hallway and it's like <laughs> you can hear all these echoes in this big mansion no it's just a normal house on an estate in Essex and um I turned up the lady was really lovely and said look we're just beyond you know we're just scared out of our wits we just don't know what to do it's just upsetting all of us it's really not good and I'm like oh, brilliant I don't mean brilliant because they were going through it I'm like get in I'm going to sort this one out and tell it to off so anyway, I thought, okay, then I said, right, as I always do, I, you know, I, I had a cup of tea with her because you always have to gauge the energy of the person when you're in someone's house. And I'm not being rude, but we do. As investigators or house clearance people, you have to see if they've, you know, there's any drinking going on, any drugs going on, if they've got any mental health issues, establish if there's any mental health issues in the family, if there's anything bad going on, if there's any grieving going on. So, you, you know, some you have to look at the explainable reasons for phenomena in a house before you look at the supernatural um, things. You know, you don't, I don't go in thinking, oh, yes, this is a spirit person. I gauge everything. And also why I'm talking to the person, <clears throat> I'm scanning all the rooms. Because in my mind's eye, I can project my energy around the house to see where the hot spots are, where I feel I need to go. And um, when I was talking to her, I said, it's a room directly above um, the lounge. And she went, yeah, that's the room, that's right. So I thought, good, I know where I am. Um, and it kind of splayed out a bit across the landing. I'm like, whoa, there's someone got the right ump up there, right ump. So I'm like, fabulous. I always ask my granddad, Fred, um, to come in with me. He always works in my phys when I do physical work, trance, paranormal investigations. I've got, and they are here. I only keep him here just as a, a, a memory of him, really, and the fact that I'm part of the legacy of the of the family gift. And these are blessed and from Rome, and he used to take these with him on his ventures and house clearances and stuff. 
Oh my God, it's stuck in the blinking. Do you know what? What I've done is I've stuck it in the lamp so it won't come out and I can't get it out. Hang on a minute. Oh, it's free, it's free, it's free. There we go. They are my granddad rosaries, all right? And it just, again, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a point of faith or, you know, we weren't religious because obviously we were spiritualists, but it's just something that's got an energy of strength and faith in it, you know, and I always have that with me when I go anywhere like that. So anyway, I go, so I said like, let me go upstairs on my own first, because I didn't want to obviously connect with her energy. Um, I think the other medium is there, isn't it terrible? I can't remember. Anyway. I said, you stay downstairs and I'll go up and have a look first of all. I walked into this room. I think there were bunk beds in there or something. I've been to so many houses for clearances. I'm trying to remember the layouts. It was years ago. And I, and I, it was freezing cold. It was really horrible. I felt sick when I walked in there. It was just not nice. And normally a kid's room is full of energy and happiness and toys everywhere. It was bloody horrible. And I think the kids were actually not staying in the room because something kept rattling the beds um, and someone kept saying that someone kept trying to come out the wall and I could see the energy of where this whatever was coming out of the wall I'm like Jesus Christ this is gonna take a bit of work do you know what I mean um, and so I thought well you know you don't show fear show courage sit down because everybody every spirit person has got a story that's why they're here do you know what I mean they're not just there to piss you off um, some of them are, like the, the, the Black Abbot, he's just a nasty little shit, but, you know, everybody's got a story, especially when it's in a home as well, there's always a story of why they're there, always. Um, and so I sat down um, in the middle of the floor, in, in the room, and I closed my eyes, and then I linked up, which is basically opening your energy, it's very easy for me, it's, it's just as natural as breathing, open your energy up, and then search for a frequency which is the spirit energy and you'll start feeling hairs on the back of your neck, goosebumps. I get an itchy nose and I sometimes burp. Don't ask me why. And it's better than the other end. And um, I sent my energy out and then I suddenly saw, it was really horrible, I saw, it wasn't a noose, but I saw um, it was either like a belt or a lead or something hanging from the landing like the loft um hatch over the landing but when i and then i immediately got up and my eyes still closed and walked towards the landing but it wasn't that landing i was looking at that's a bit weird it's really weird and it was someone had hung themselves but it wasn't in that house and i thought well why am i seeing that i was really confused now i'm going to make up the names here um because one i don't want to give energy to the name i'm going to say um, and so it's obviously confidential um, so I'm gonna call him John Smith so I then saw my mum's thing that she married after my dad died um, and he was an evil piece of shit <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> and um, you hear about it in the book when you read the book anyway um, I saw his nut I saw him and I thought Right, okay, so I shouted down to the woman and I said, Do you know someone called John Smith? And she went, What? I said, Do you know someone called John Smith? It was a very different name from that and very unusual. So it's pretty well, it was the name of the arsehole that my mum married. And um, she went, Oh my god, yes, that's my brother. And I went, Really? She went, Yeah, she goes, Oh my god, I can't believe you picked that name up. And so I said, Right, okay. So I said, um, He's passed over, hasn't he, darling? She went, Yeah. He hung himself. I went, right. I said, it wasn't here. It was its house. She went, yeah. He hung himself. It's just been horrific. We had no idea he was going to do it. Da, 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 da. Most people don't with suicide. It's a horrific thing to endure. And so I thought, this is a source of my problem. Um, so I knew then that I had to concentrate on the name, concentrate on his energy. And I said, don't worry, just leave it. She was getting a bit upset. So I said, just, let, just stay there and let me deal with it. And eventually he come in and he was so angry. It was ridiculous. Um, there was a lot of issues going on. Again, I'm not going to expose it too much, but there was family pressure and things going on with relationships that just sent him over the edge. Um, and most, to be honest with you, most of the house issues I get are people that take themselves over because I don't want to go up because I feel guilty and I want to stay down here and try and be a strength for the people, um, you know, that that they weren't when they were alive. 
But what they need to do is go up, get healed, and then come back down. But he didn't want to do that. And so I ended up talking to him, and he basically said, the reason why I'm here is because I need to look after these children, three kids. He said, I was such a nightmare down here, and I've let everybody down. I didn't realise how upset people would be and how much they would miss me. And he said, so I have now got the job of looking after those kids and protecting them. I said, no. I said, listen. And this is the most interesting part of this, is that because he was still angry, it had been quite recent he'd done it, because he was still angry with himself and still going through the human emotions of what led him to take himself over, that was coming through with him. So even though he was there to love and protect the children, because he was still in that unhealed energy, it was just coming out as anger and hate and cold and fear and it was just like a malicious energy but it wasn't really he wanted to look after his nieces and nephew but it, it actually turned out that he was bringing in all of the energy of his human emotions which was literally what he felt like before he passed over so that was what was going on in the room that was what was going on in the room and he had no idea he was bringing that energy energy is understated you know, it's like if you sit in there and one of your friends walks in, you go, shit, you're all right. You know, straight away, you can feel their energy. They bring the energy in with them. Even if they're smiling, you can feel it. What's wrong? Nothing. No, what's wrong? Well, and then they tell you. It's exactly the same with a spirit person, but it's magnified. And it's not only magnified because they're not physical matter. They're obviously spreading their energy about as they come into the ether, but nobody can see it or say, are you all right? So it's even more fearful because they're like, shit. Why is it freezing cold now? And why is it all aggressive and horrible and oppressive? You know, nobody knows why. So I had a long chat with John, John, and um, I basically said to him, darling, you've got to go up and get yourself a... No, there's no heaven. It's all bullshit. I, I, saw, I saw a bit of light, but it's all bullshit. I'm not going up there and, and I won't be welcomed and blah, 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 blah. And so I said, look, you're going to have to do it. So what I had to do was, Julianus helps me with this, one of my guides, and he, we basically open up a door. It's, it's, it, 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 when I first did it, I thought, this ain't going to work. This is bullshit. Cause it's all in my head. But it bloody does, because the results are, you ask the people, is it worked? And they go, yeah. So what I do is there's a place I go to where I meet my guides, which most people will know. If you are who are meditating or developing mediums or working mediums, you'll know that there's a meeting place that during your training, might even still have it now, I do sometimes, um, where you go to this meeting space, it could be a house. Mine's a really cool open plan flat, darling. Yes. And when you go down the first, when you go up the first three steps, you can either go right, and I know that if I go up those steps and open that door, that's the spirit world. And if I go left, I can sit on a white city and meet people, right? So I go right and I say, Julianus, where are you? And then we basically coax the spirit to go through the door. I was so skeptical for what load of parents, but when it, if I did it first, did it, when Julianus showed me what to do with my granddad, I was like, it's like bullshit. All I've done is think it. It's not going to work. Bloody did. Bloody did. Always has. So, um, it took a while. It took a while. You know, I felt like I was dealing with a bloody difficult prisoner when I was in the old bill. It was like, God, come on, mate. Just go trust me on this. You're going to feel so much better. If you go up, get yourself healed, get yourself sorted, reunite with the rest of your family members who've gone over. You'll realise that you're not going to get blamed. You'll realise that you're not in any purgatory. Right, this was your life path, you've done it. You go to exactly the same space as everybody else. And that's for people that have had the horror of having a family member or loved one um, pass due to suicide. They don't go anywhere different. They're with your family, they're safe and well. And I have to say, most of the um, suicidal people that have come back, or suicide people that have come back to talk to me, they're so relieved, so happy and so calm. You know, um, the only thing that they still get concerned about is, you know, the wake, you know, in the wake of their passing, what they left behind. Because obviously we're, why didn't we, I've had it, I've been subject to um, someone very close committing suicide. And, and I knew that I needed to go and pick him up, but I didn't. And um, you, you get the, why didn't I pick him up? But they would have chosen another time to do it at the end of the day. Um, in the end, we convinced him that the only way to help his, his nephews, his nieces, all the rest of it, was to go up, get healed, and come back as a strength in that divine, loving, um, contented energy. I said, that is how you're going to help them. I said, at the moment, you are creating a fucking nightmare. 
I said, do you, do you, you, you can't see what you're doing. You, this place is cold, it's oppressive, it's scary, it's, it's disconcerting, it's awful. That is what you're bringing here, John. And he said, what? And I said, that's what you're bringing. You are bringing shit into this house when you're supposed to love this family. And he went, oh my God, oh my God. So that's what the kind of basis was going on in my head. Um, and eventually, um, I can't remember who came to the door, but I eventually um, coaxed. And all you do is in my mind's eye, with my visualization, visualization I stand with Julianus and we watch the figure of him walk through the door and then we close it it's that simple um and then sometimes i'll cleanse the rooms with um a bit of sea salt around the around the around the walls it depends who it is and what the situation is may leave um an amethyst crystal in there or a clear quartz to clear the energy or um sage it you know sage it with white sage it's all different ways i deal with it i just go on my intuition or i tell the owners to do that um so eventually when i did it I cannot tell you how remarkable it was after the event. After I came to and looked around, it was a completely different room. It was just it, it just looked light and airy. It was like a different room that I could sit all day in and be comfortable, whereas I couldn't wait to get out because I wanted to puke when I first walked in there. Um, it was incredible. And so I called her up and she walked and went, Oh my God, bear in mind, no, she doesn't know anything about spiritual stuff. She's not. Uh, but she could see it and went, bloody hell, this room is totally different. It's remarkable. So I went downstairs, had another cup of tea, and I explained to her. It's very emotional. You have to be exceptionally careful. You're dealing with people's raw emotions. You're dealing with, you know, family members that have passed over. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. And lucky I had all that training through experience and through being, you know, bereavement trained as a family liaison officer in the police. And so, you know, all the skills I've accrued over the years are just so beneficial to me when I'm dealing with things like this because it is exceptionally raw, it's exceptionally intimate, it's something that, you know, most people don't want to discuss. And there was a lot of healing that day and I left her exceptionally happy but, you know, obviously sad because of the situation with John. Um, but what I will say is, is that not everything that is dark and spooky is bad. It just takes a good medium to go in and find out what the story is. So I thought I'd just give it a little spin today, rather than a scary ghost and spirit. Um, it's just something that, you know, if you prejudge, you could put yourself in trouble. Of going in there going, come on then! When it really was just a very, very desperately poorly man that took himself over and just wanted to look after his family. And I've heard nothing back of anything negative. It's all been perfectly fine and great. So no doubt he just comes in now, places a blessing on them and looks out for them. So isn't that a lovely ending to something that could have been very, very difficult if it wasn't dealt with? So I hope you like my little story. I hope you like it. And I'm gonna go and do something lovely. I might just rain in here. I don't know what we're gonna to do today. Perhaps go for a drive or something. Bit, bit, bit bleary though, isn't it? Well, I'm in Devon. There's people watching from Australia and America and God knows it's raining here a lot. But yesterday was fantastic. So who knows what we shall, we shall do. Good weather for ducks, that's what I'll say. So I hope you enjoyed my story. Um, please, again, if any of you want to share your stories of your um, spiritual and paranormal encounters, please put them on the comments below. Um, and I'm going to chuck a few more in, just in the spirit of Halloween as we go on. Um, so take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you very soon. Mwah! Love to you all. Thank you all for your support as ever. Bye now.